How's it going ladies and gentlemen, my name is Carter Sirach and in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys an overview of an awesome, super powerful new project management tool that I have been using for a little while. It's kind of like Notion and Trello and Google Sheets kind of all mashed into one and it has its own little secret sauce that kind of has its own spin on things and that is its API integrations, okay? The API integrations with this uh, software that I'm about to show you guys and you probably see it by the title software is called Stackby. Uh, the, the API integrations are really what set this apart and it's really what made this kind of the obvious solution when it comes to a full scale project management software. Because Notion, I don't even know if they have uh, API integration on their roadmap, um, but they don't have it right now. I've, I've seen a few people creating like third party ones, but um, I haven't seen a lot of that with Notion. So um, yeah, pretty much just moving everything over to stack by right now. And I just wanted to kind of show you guys what that looks like in terms of uh, mapping my customer journey, ma mapping uh, projects and things like that within stack by. So without further ado, let's get into my computer. So as you can see, this is kind of how I map out any business, right? You've got uh, three sort of primary uh, departments or, or processes and you've got the attraction process, then you've got the conversion process, and then you have the delivery process. Okay, so along this process, you lose people along the way and eventually in the delivery process, you're going to have customers at this point, but you get a lot of people in, you get an influx, and then you have to go through sales and then you eventually can finally provide your service. But to do that, you have to make sure that there aren't any sort of leaks in this or um, you know low points in this. Like you gotta keep an eye on your conversion rate in terms of uh, what's going on here? Like, are you closing sales at an effective level? Are you getting enough attraction in? Like, are you getting enough traffic to your website? Are you getting enough, um, like cold emails sent and things like that? Are you hitting the pavement enough? Are your salespeople getting in front of the right people? Are you getting views on your content? Like that's what we have to look at in the attraction numbers. And then we have to look at, is that generating meetings? Okay. That's that kind of percentage crossover. And then what is our closing rate? Like how long are the sales cycles lasting? That's kind of the things that you look at in the sales process. And then once you get over to delivery, it's just about, you know, customer happiness and are customers sticking around? How is your retention? You know, so you're looking at all of these different processes and in order to track these and get them all in one place, I like using stack buy. Okay. So that being said, as you can see, I have kind of boiled my stack by stack down into, uh, you know, these red sections, which are over here, my attraction, yellow sections, which is my conversion section or my sales section, and then green, which is my deliverable tracking. So like my services and my delivery. Okay, so that is kind of how I've lumped this out. Now, every stack here that you're seeing is a different database slash Google Sheet. And I'll actually click into it, it's pretty cool. The cool thing is you've got Kanban boards here for different stage flow here. So like if it's in the filming stage, I can drag it over to editing once it's filmed. Um, you know, calendar view, you can see when things are going to go up. And this is kind of like how I, how we map out our content marketing. We've got filming here. Um, and then we've got like an editing view. And then the really cool thing about this is we have an analyzing view. So in this analyzing view, we can pull, uh, the YouTube API to get updated video views. As you can see, when I hit refresh there, we got a few, uh, a few new video views. Um, so we just come in here and refresh those every once in a while and see how those are doing. Um, but yeah, essentially that is like the video planning stack. And then I go over back home and we've got a cold email testing set up here. So this I think is super important. Like if you're going to test cold emails, you want to do it right. Okay. So what we have is we have niche offer and uh, testing variable. So you want to test one variable at a time when you're testing cold emails. That's why I went ahead and did like um, I entered a few different variables that could be affecting the cold email and then I have the offer and then the niche. Okay. And all of these concate into a, uh, name over here. This is just a formula to pull whatever is in these, um, columns over here. So I'm just going to go into the campaign section really quick and check this out. Concate niche dash offer dash testing variable. If you guys are liking this video so far, please drop a like. I would really appreciate it. It helps this channel out a lot and it just, you know, keeps me making videos. That's what keeps me excited about this channel. So please drop a like. I'd appreciate it. I also have a link to stack by down below. They will give me a little bit of a kickback if you use my link, but it as comes at no extra cost to you. So no worries. Just give it a try, you know, sign up for their free trial. See what you think. 
Um, I'm loving it so far. Let's get back into the video. And then eventually what I want to do is actually connect this with Zapier because this has a Zapier integration and I want to pull all my sent numbers, open numbers, percentage, meetings, meetings booked, deals one. I am going to pull all of this from Zapier um, and I'm actually going to use uh, Snove.io or Snovio. I don't know how to say it. Um, but this is like a cold emailing outreach outreach automation platform that actually has all of this data sent, opened, open percentage, meeting, meeting percentage, uh, deals won. Um, but for now, I'm just manual entering this, which isn't a bad thing. It's still super quick, still pretty easy. So all I have to do is literally just click in here. And if I change the sent number to like 200, it'll automatically update these percentages. Um, opened, I can change to like, let's say, out of those 200, 150 opened. And then I have an open percentage that it gives me. Um, meetings booked out of those, let's say I book five meetings and then, or let's say 10 meetings. Yep, and that updates. And then deals one, we can put in and that for deals one, let's say that out of those 10, we close five. And that would mean that we have a 3% closing rate. So here's how you can kind of practically use this. If you like the fact that you got, let's say 75% open rate, that must mean that the subject line that we tested was good. So I've got the subject line template email over here that kind of includes the name of the user and then fix this. Like I just say, like, let's say John fix this. That's the subject line. So the subject line obviously worked pretty good if this is at 75%, right? So what we're gonna do next is test the body and, and improve the body because as you can see, we got 10 meetings out of those 150. So maybe we wanna try to get it up to 15 meetings instead of just 10, okay? So what I can do here is I can just duplicate this row. I can clear out the sent, I can clear out the opened, I can clear out the meetings and I can clear out the deals one. And then what I can do is keep everything here the same, web design, agency owners, but just change what I'm testing. So I change maybe the uh, body, but then you want to make sure that you use pretty much the same subject line because the subject line was obviously working for open percentage So I'm going to copy the subject line. I'm actually going to copy this whole thing I'm going to paste it in here and then for this campaign that you're looking at in this row. I would just change the uh, The body. Okay, so this I would consider first line and then the rest of this I would consider the body Okay, so I would delete that and I would come in and test body v2 and I just kind of write that out in here so that I know what body I'm testing. Then we might go on to send another 200 emails to different people, mind you, like we're not gonna send these to the exact same people, we're just gonna send them to the same niche, agency owners, and for the same offer, web design, and we're going to use the same subject line that performed well the first time, okay? So let's say this time the subject line doesn't perform quite as well, but it holds pretty true to its, uh, its number. Um, this time we got 70% instead of 75. You will see some fluctuation there. And then let's say that meetings booked, let's say they shot up, so we got 15, okay? And then deals won, let's say out of those, we got seven deals, okay? So what you'll notice ultimately is that after you did this iteration, you learned that, you know, that improved your open percentage. And then, you know, you kept your subject line, you went on to the next thing and you improved your body and then you got more meetings, which led to a higher meeting book rate, which in turn led to a higher closing rate. Okay, so that's kind of how you can use this practically to test out cold emails. And as I said, this gets super powerful when you start using an integration, okay? So in order to add an integration, what you do is you just hit add column and it's super simple. Um, you can just hit the drop down here, connect to an API or service, and I'm just gonna hit API integration. And then you can select from the list of different APIs that they have here to connect. Now, moving on to my next section, the pipeline. Okay, so this is just a very lightweight CRM. I Guys, I get it, there are better CRMs out there, but if you wanna have it all in one place, like this is definitely going to be like a really good CRM as well. Like it can work as a CRM for sure. So that being said, let me show you how our CRM works, okay? So we've got an overview, we've got cold leads, uh, touch point calendar, meetings booked, and deals one. These are all our filter views, and this is our overview. Okay, so we get all of our data in here, but this is just confusing to look at. So why not be practical, okay? That's why we created a cold leads tab. And on this cold leads tab, it's just gonna give me an idea of when I need to follow up with people next. So I'm gonna put a next touch point, and then let's say I followed up with them on the 26th, then I would just move the next touch point to the 30th, let's say. And you know, I've got asset folder linked here, so this is just gonna link out to a Google Drive folder where I have all their assets, proposals, sitemaps, um, you know, any sort of uh, contracts, invoices, anything like that that's associated with the project. And then I've also got a meeting URL here. Um, this actually wouldn't be here yet. 
Um, this is just for example's sake, but technically what would happen is once this gets changed to meeting booked, it would move out of here because that's how I have the filter set up and it would move into uh, meetings booked. Kind of just paste the meeting URL in there and then that way you can just click on that Zoom URL whenever you're ready to start the meeting. Now that we're in this meetings booked section here, um, I also have notes. So basically these this notes section kind of just keeps tabs on what the relationship is like, what the sort of pain points are that this customer is dealing with. Um, and then we also just have email and phone number. The main purpose of this tab here is just to keep track of the meeting URL. And whenever I have a meeting with someone, I can open this up, I can pop open the meeting URL, I can open the notes and I can keep typing along the way just to make sure that we're staying up to date on what this project needs and you know what, what comes next with this project, right? And then once I win a deal, let's say I win a deal with Jackie Long here, I just hit deal one, boom. And then I can go to the deals one section and Jackie is in here. And what we have next here is our JV partner column, okay? So we have a lot of joint venture partners at Greenline Media. And when we have a joint venture partner, typically what that means is they have referred over one of these leads to us. So they're going to get a percentage since we closed the deal, okay? So let's say this deal closed for uh, $10,000. That means our JV partner payout would be $1,000 to Chris Chan or whoever the JV partner is listed as on this, uh, on this referral. And then once that payment is complete, I can just hit JV payout complete. And that way, you know, we have the whole process on here and I can track whether our partners got paid or not for getting us that lead and closing that deal with us. And then another interesting section we have here is the touch point calendar. Now this is all of our meetings and scheduled follow-ups. So what I can just do is just kind of hit next through here and just look at the different months and kind of look at the uh, different stats. You can click into them, uh, read estimated value of the deal. Uh, read actual value if the deal is already won. And then uh, for this one, it wouldn't make sense because that one's actually, uh, that one's already won. But for this one, let's say um, we have a meeting URL in here. We have notes we can kind of read just to kind of keep up to tabs with the client. And yeah, this is just kind of a handy little CRM. I'm gonna head back home here and heading into our final section, the deliverable tracking. Now at the forefront here, we have a very simple deliverable tracking system. We have an all deliverables view, we have a recurring deliverables view, and then we have a one-time deliverables view. You can keep this super basic or you can make it super complex. All I have here is a target completion date. Uh, you can put company name in, uh, whether it's recurring or one-time. This is just a single select for one of these two options. And then whatever the deliverable is, right? So paid ads, SEO accelerator, website design, run report, and then you can put responsibility in here. So if there is somebody that is related to this project, you can also set up a uh, multi-collaborator. Um, that's actually what it's on right now, multi-collaborator, collaborator, or you can do single. Um, so if there are multiple people on here, you could tick notify collaborator. And then when you enter one of your employees or something like that in here, they get notified with, hey, uh, this is ready to go, okay? And then what you can do from here is you can just go to re recurring deliverables if you wanna get a good view of when you've gotta complete the next task because these ones aren't necessarily ones where you check a box. On these ones, you might just have to change something. So this one's weekly maintenance. So when it gets done on the 29th, what you would do after you complete it is just go to the next Monday and hit the sixth. And that way, you know, it kind of serves that recurring purpose. As for one-time deliverables, you'll just click done when they're done. And what you could even do if you wanted to is you could just filter out the ones that are already done so that they disappear into an archive. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to do that. We go grid layout, name this grid archive. I'm gonna hit filter, add filter. And I'm just going to hit done, is checked. And it's going to show all the checked sections here. And then we can go back to one-time deliverables and we can go to filter add filter, done is, and then just make it empty. Uh, and that way it'll make it disappear whenever you finish a project. You just click on it and it goes straight to the archive, boom, okay? And then in all deliverables, you could also add a filter here to hide those if you don't want them in here. But I like to just see an overview and have all the columns in one of my uh, sections. So that's why we have this all deliverables tab. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps the channel and it really just, uh, you know, it keeps me motivated to keep making videos. And if you have any questions about StackBuy, leave them in the comments below. I've been really digging into the software and getting to know it. So if you are interested in learning about it too and using those API integrations, because that is the most powerful thing there that I've got to get more into actually. I've started using it for YouTube views, but 
I'm going to be using it even more for um, you know different cold email automations. I just have to figure out how to get all that connected, but um, I'm really excited to keep using it and uh, I hope you guys are too. If you are, I do have a stack by link in the description. They will give me a little kickback if you guys decide to use that link to start a free trial and then work with stack by on like a, on one of their payment plans. They are, you know, guys, they're honestly really affordable. Um, so yeah, just try out stack by, let me know what you think. All right. I'll leave it at that. Have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.